Hey everyone, I'm Iris Ray. And I'm Kelly Lewis. We're your teachers. Today we are going to be covering some camera basics. We are using this Canon Rebel T6. A lot of these things will apply across the board to any camera that you're using. I will be covering exposure settings, color balance, and focal lengths. I'm gonna be covering focal points, uh, handling, and camera maintenance. Take it away, Iris. For all of your assignments, you'll want to shoot your files in RAW mode, not JPEG. With a RAW file, that's the flattest file that your camera can create. That way you can apply any adjustments that you want and you don't have a rendered version that you're working off of. We'll talk about exporting JPEGs later, but we want to make sure that your camera is set to shooting RAW. So you'll go to the menu button. It's the very first option that you'll see on the first menu page choose the size of your files, JPEGs, etc. But you want to just have it selected on RAW, like you see right here. You'll also want to make sure that you're shooting in manual mode. That way you have control over all of your settings that we're about to discuss. Shutter speed, aperture, ISO. You can adjust anything to your lighting situation and you have control over everything. On the dial up top, there's an M for manual mode. Just make sure that your dial is set to that M and you'll be ready to go. Your aperture or f-stop, as you'll also hear it called, is the opening in your lens. It widens and closes and that changes the amount of light that you're letting in to hit the sensor. The wider your aperture, the more light you're letting into your camera and you will have a more shallow depth of field. The more narrow that your aperture is, the less light you're letting in and you'll have more in focus in your image. You'll see here a number with F at the beginning. F-stop is the way that aperture is measured, so you'll hear us using those terms interchangeably, aperture and F-stop. You will select that number and you can see here the smaller numbers to the left, the larger numbers to the right, and you'll change it with the dial at the top of your camera. Depending on what camera you're using, that might function differently, but for the Canon Rebels, that's what you'll be using. We'll be starting at f5.6. This will give you a fair amount of light and you'll also be able to see a difference in your depth of field. Your shutter speed determines how long the shutter will stay open as you're taking a photograph. If you want to do a long exposure, something a little bit more creative, you'll slow down your shutter speed so your camera will actually be capturing movement as things move through the frame. But for our purposes, you'll want to keep your shutter speed fast so that way if you're hand holding, you won't see any blur or camera shake in your images and everything is staying sharp. So now we will go to the back of the camera and you'll see a number that says one over X. That's going to be your shutter speed. You will select that. You'll see to the left, it says slow, to the right, it says fast. And remember, the slower your shutter speed, the longer the shutter will stay open. The faster it is, the less amount of time your shutter will be open. We recommend 1 over 100 for anything that you are doing handheld and 1 over 60 for anything that you are shooting on a tripod. Okay, up next we are going to talk about ISO. This is another camera setting that controls the exposure of your images. ISO also determines how grainy your images are going to look. That's because your ISO speed is how quickly your camera is processing those images. The lower your ISO, the less light you're letting in, the slower those images are processing. The higher the ISO, you're able to get more light, but you'll also get more grain when you raise your ISO. So we recommend ISO 400. It's kind of a nice middle point. We understand that there are some situations where if you're shooting indoors, you might need to go up to ISO 800. And we'll go over some post-processing tips later for how you can minimize any grain that you see in your images. But next, we're gonna go to the back of the camera and show you how to change your ISO. 
So luckily for these Canon Rebels, there's a button here to the right of your screen that says ISO. 200 and 400 is going to be your sweet spot. For anything in extremely bright daylight, you have 100. And for any lower light situations, 800. We would really recommend that you only work between 100 and 800 for everything that you're doing in this class. Your white balance, which you'll also hear us refer to as your color temperature. That is the overall color cast of your images. So when you're shooting outdoors, you want to make sure that your white balance is set to daylight. When you're shooting indoors, you want to make sure that your white balance is set to tungsten mode. This is so that you have the most neutral, authentic looking colors in your images possible. On the back of the camera, same with ISO, there is a white balance button over here on the right. You'll see the sun, that's the symbol for the daylight temperature balance. You scroll over a couple more and you'll see tungsten light. Daylight and tungsten will be the two white balance choices that you'll be focusing on for this class. And now we're going to talk about focal length. The focal length refers to your lens, wide angle, telephoto, etc. Those might be some buzzwords that you've heard thrown around before. The shorter your focal length, the wider your angle of view will be. This is great for landscapes, group photos, etc. When you're shooting wide angle, you also want to make sure that you're not too close to your subject, otherwise you'll begin to see distortion. So for our purposes, since we're going to be shooting a lot of products, you don't want to be shooting wide angle and getting too close to your subject, otherwise you'll see too much distortion. For most of what we're shooting, 55 is going to be sort of your sweet spot. When you're shooting at a longer focal length, your image frame is more compressed. There is less that you see around your subject. Some of the distortion is eliminated. You just have a, a narrower view of what's in frame. All right, now we're gonna talk about moving the focal point around. And the reason you would wanna do that is so that you can control exactly what part of your image is getting the focus. If you're shooting something with a very shallow depth of field and have a lot of elements that are out of focus, you wanna make sure that the subject is what is in focus. And the way you're gonna do that is to move the focal point inside of your camera. So the way that you change where your focal point is going to be is on the back of the camera. There's a little button up here on the top right with a magnifying glass with a plus sign in it. If you press that button, you'll see a menu come up on the back on your LCD that has nine squares and a diamond pattern. You'll also be able to see inside of your camera viewfinder the same pattern. And if you rotate your dial that's right behind your trigger button, you'll be able to see that box lights up and you can move it around and you can decide which square you want to have your focal point be. This is a good part to use when you are shooting something with a composition that is maybe off-center. So your subject would be a little bit to the left or the right in your frame. You don't want to have your focal point on the center dial because then it will go to what's in the middle of your frame and not at your subject. When you get to where all of the boxes are lit up, this means that it's on automatic selection. And then when you push the trigger, your camera is going to decide which part of your frame is the best part to focus on. You definitely don't want to do that because you want to have all the control of where your focus is. Definitely use this dial to change your focal point for more interesting compositions in your work. The next thing we're going to talk about is manual and autofocus. On the side of your lens, you'll see a little switch that says AF or MF. AF stands for autofocus and MF stands for manual focus. To start off with, we're going to put our camera in autofocus. That means that we'll be able to point our camera at our subject and tap our trigger button. You'll hear a little chirp if it has connected with your subject and it's very sharp. For creating GIFs, you want to use the autofocus button to lock in your focus and then switch it to manual to ensure that between different shots, your focus stays in the same spot. All right, 
now we're going to talk about single shot shooting or continuous shooting. Single shot shooting is when you take one picture, your camera is only going to take one frame. If you do continuous shooting, it's going to take multiple frames in a row. In order to change that, you're going to look on the back of your camera. Next to your set button, there is a little button on the left that has three little boxes in a row and also a little stopwatch. If you click on it, it's going to bring up a menu and you're going to see there's a square that's just one square and to the right of it is three that's continuous shooting next to that you'll see a little timer icon this is a 10 second self timer so if you are shooting something that's on a tripod you can click this button and it'll take the picture 10 seconds later this ensures that you don't have any motion from hitting the trigger you also have a two second timer the last on the list is the self timer and it's a continuous one it's automatically a 10 second timer so it'll be a 10 second delay before your camera will start taking pictures and down at the bottom you can see a number which you can raise up and down from 1 to 10 to decide how many images you want your camera to take continuously after you push the trigger this is really great for doing stop motions so you could set it to 10 frames and then when you push the button it'll take 10 consecutive images in a once you're done with your photo shoot and you have everything complete, eventually you're going to need to delete your memory card so you can move on to your next assignment. The first thing you need to do before you do that is make sure you have everything backed up. I personally use Backblaze to back up all of my files from my computer to an online server. Iris uses duplicating all of her files on multiple drives. There are definitely a ton of options out there for you to use to make sure that you have all of your images secured, but you definitely want to make sure that you have all of your work on two different drives before you move on to deleting your files off of your memory card. In order to get the images off of our card, we are going to format it. We don't want you to go through the little play button and look back at your files and just start deleting things one by one. It's better to wait and do all of your calling on your computer. To format our card, you're going to click on the menu button on the back of your screen and you're going to use your dial to toggle over here to the right to the very first wrench. And if you move your cursor down to format card, you're gonna hit set. And you're gonna look at the back, it's gonna warn you, format card, all data will be lost, exclamation point. This is very serious, because once you do it, it can't be undone. So definitely make sure you have all of your work backed up in two places. And once you've decided that you have that, and you've checked it, then you can toggle over to okay, and all of your stuff will be deleted off of your memory card. All right, now we're gonna talk about proper camera maintenance. It's super important to take care of your equipment so that it is ready to go before your next shoot. So at the end of each shoot, it's a really good idea to use a lens cleaning cloth or a lens wipe, which you can also find in the cafeteria at the circus. It's to my parade. Make sure it is smudge free. That way you don't have to do this stuff at the beginning of your shoot the next time you have to do an assignment. Also make sure that you keep up with your lens caps. Make sure you replace it every single time. It protects your lens and keeps it from getting scratched up while it is secured in your bag. Another thing to do right away after you've downloaded all your memory cards, that kind of stuff, is to remove your battery. Go ahead and put it on the charger and have it be charging so that you, the next time you have to shoot, you immediately have a fully charged battery ready to go. Another option, which you guys might not have access to with the cameras that you are given, is to use this little squishy air thing to blow dust and stuff out of your lens and out of the inside of your camera. And the way you're going to do that is to push this little button over here on the left side of your camera. You're going to rotate your lens and set it down like this. You're going to hold your camera upside down and use your little puffy thing to blow air into the camera. <laughs> It's super important that you hold your camera and your lens upside down so that the dust doesn't fall right back inside. And then make sure that you use the little white square or the little red dot, whichever your lens and camera have, to line up on your body and on your lens. And then you can rotate to the right until you hear a click and you'll know that your lens is securely on there. And then make sure you store your camera back in your bag just to keep it safe from all the harmful things that could happen to it if it's just out in the open. All right, guys. Well, there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, send us an email.